Hey you, welcome back to my channel for our Plant Therapy Thursday session where we enter the plant kingdom and explore weird and beautiful plants from around the world from relaxing rainforest plants to sculptural desert cacti and succulents. Good morning, I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be potting up some tiny cactus. So some of these dwarf cactus are really interesting and I thought it'd be fun to just go ahead and pot them all up in one video. I've got a couple mammillarias here, an epithelantha. We do have a couple of astrophytums that I've been meaning to pot up. That one is a really gorgeous one there. It has the chevrons on it. And there's a few euphorbias in here also that I need to pot up, but that'll be a separate video. There's a little obesa hiding back there. And I don't know if that is a male or a female though. Um, as soon as I find out, then I will get the opposite. So that way I have both and can pollinate back and forth. And I do have some lithops out here too, but those I'm not gonna pot up until um, about October, I would say. And then I have this one that looks like it's falling out of its pot. <laughs> that one, actually both of these two here are new purchases. I got those at Airlands Greenhouses here in Tucson. And um, that one is like barely hanging in there. <laughs> So I've got Optica rubra and Lithops werneri, werneri, I'm not sure. I'm new to this one, but it was pink and I thought, wow, that is such a unique Lithops. I've never seen like a pink one like that. So anyway, that one, uh, I might help it back into the pot, but other than that, I'm waiting until October to pot those up. I just realized I'm out of top dressing. So I'm gonna take you guys out with me to where I get my top dressing and we'll go do that. And then we'll come back and start potting these guys up. All right guys, we're at Sonoran Landscaping Materials and this is where I get my top dressing. They have it in all different colors, all different shades of desert tones and sand and over here is what I'm gonna be getting. It's lava pie. It has a pinker tint to it. So I pretty much already filled up my bag here. So you can bring a five gallon bucket or one of these bags. I just already had one of these, so just filled that up and that is the yava pie and then I was looking at this one over here this one's actually nice over here I like that too let's see this one I think that's the Santa Fe gold I'm not sure but I do like that color too all right so I'm just gonna get the one bag though for now I'm at Acme sand and gravel right now this is normally where we get our pumice right over there but today I'm getting Santa Cruz play sand, which is river sand. So I'm gonna get some of this and then also size chat, which are just small pebbles over the other direction there. And here's the size chat that I'm getting. So it's just small pebbles. I think that'll be perfect. Right. Uh, I'm gonna do a potting up video with you guys. I have my tiny cactus babies here. I got uh, most of them, wait, let's see, one, two, three, uh, for oh wait yeah actually all of those came from plants for the southwest uh cactus nur wait yeah they're a specialty succulent and cactus nursery they have euphorbias and all kinds of really cool plants there um, but they're not too far away from where we're at and so i went down there um, on multiple occasions and kind of found these one by one and i just realized i've had them for a while and it's time to get these potted up into a nicer pot before the season changes um, so while it's still warm, while they're still in their growing season, and I'll just take you through the whole process of exactly what I do from the pots to the soil, and we'll go over all the varieties that I have here. So some of the smaller varieties of cactus can be more rock prone. You know, they're dwarf, they don't need very much soil around them. They're normally growing in like little crevices of rocks and they just have a tiny bit of soil in there um, and normally more mineral based too. So they can be a little more sensitive to being overwatered or um, you know, just having too much dampness in a, a, too much soil around them. So anyway, that they can be a little more rot prone, some of these varieties. And so I was just going through my pots, but you don't really know until you get these out of the pot. So these are pretty small though, and I do not have enough small, like really small pots for them, but we're gonna match them up as close as I can and the soil will hopefully make up for the rest. We're gonna make it very mineral based and very gritty. Um, so, okay, let me scoot these off and we'll get mixing up the soil. I was just looking at some of these pots and these are gonna make awesome lithops pots, but the lithops aren't ready to be potted up yet. We're gonna pot those up a little later in fall, like maybe October-ish, so actually, yeah, so wait, this is September. Okay, so next month. Okay, so next month we're gonna be potting up some lithops. Look at this one, you guys. Doesn't that remind you of like Jupiter's great red spot or something? I just think that's so neat. I love natural clay pots. Okay, before we get mixing up the soil, I just wanna show you guys this one here. Now this I've had for a little while already, so it's already been potted up, but I just wanna show you how adorable and how special a dwarf cactus can be. 
how cute is that little cactus? So that is an Epithelantha micromeris. These are just adorable. So that one's got the two heads and this one is young still. They will get larger. In fact, I'll show you um, how they look when they're a little older. This one here. Okay, so here it is when it's a little older. This is another Epithelantha micromeris. This one has seed pods right now. So it was already in bloom. It's got the seed pods and they put out their blooms, these beautiful pale pink blooms right on the very top of the cactus. So on the newest growth and that's where they have the seed pods. So that is just an adorable little cactus. And I was looking for one of these for a while. They can be a little hard to find because they're kind of more of a specialty cactus. There's just something really unique about dwarf cacti that really attract me to them. And I just think they are absolutely adorable. But look at the size of that little thing compared to like my fingernail, for example, like how tiny that is but they're just super unique cactus. Okay, so let me bring you guys in a little bit closer and that way you can get a better look at the texture and exactly what I'm using for the soil. So here's what I'm gonna be using as far as ingredients goes for our soil mix. So I've got a loam-based potting soil here. This is just a very basic potting soil. It does already have some bark chips in here. It's got about 10% sand. It already comes mixed up when I buy it. I buy it at one of our local cactus nurseries here. Um, so they kind of specialize in uh, desert cactus, um, but they also have a lot of you know desert trees and citrus and things like that as well um, so they do have like scoria or lava already mixed in here but some of it is a little bit chunky since they do use this just as a base soil for all kinds of desert plants and so I like to sift it so I'll use a classifier which is just one of these and they have screens with different size holes and so I'll just use one of these pop in a screen and you just pour in whatever you're sifting, whether it's pumice or your soil mix, shake it back and forth and you can catch the pieces that you don't want in your soil and then everything else uh, falls through, right? So just to give you an idea of how I sift it. Um, we can always uh, share more about that in another video, like which sort of ingredients I do sifting on. But this does have the, the lava already in it, but it, since it does have some chunky pieces of lava, larger pieces, along with some of the chunkier bark pieces, I like to sift that out. So I like my soil to be not as chunky. I want it a little more finer because especially the cactus we're putting up, they're small, they have very small fibrous roots. And so I don't want really large chunky pieces in there. So I try to just keep, uh, keep it a little more closer to like quarter inch or below. And then I do have some extra lava here. And so I have some extra scoria here in the middle. So that's also the same type that's in the soil. So I just like to add a little extra to that. And again, it is the smaller pieces, more like quarter inch size. And then I also have turfus here, which is a calcium clay. And so that is kind of a mix of different sizes. I do sift this also, but I didn't sift for this because I don't mind having the sandier bits in there too. Um, but it is pretty clean. So it doesn't have like a lot of dust or anything really in it. So it is a mix of sizes is there and then I've got pumice right here and this is about quarter inch and below here and then this is what I call pumice sand and so I've sifted out the dust particles like the really small particles just to catch these sandy bits here so it's like very very coarse sand is basically what that is and the the pumice sand is just a byproduct of sifting my larger pumice um, so I just like to put that to use and it seems to work really well for a lot of my plants that have the smaller fiber roots and depending on where you get your lava rock it can be a little chunky sometimes like sometimes the pieces are quite large and so I sift out any of the large pieces and I just save more of the quarter inch size and then I just used a small terracotta pot to scoop out the amounts that we have out here so I have one part turfus one part pumice one part pumice sand one part lava rock and then three parts of our loam based soil that also already has sand and lava rock and bark particles in there. If I sound slightly muffled, it's because I'm wearing a mask and I always recommend wearing a mask when you're mixing up your soil because it can get a little dusty. So just as kind of a guideline, you usually aim for about 50% mineral content or grit 
added to your organic part of your soil. So it's usually one part to one part or 50-50 blend. And then from there, if you have an especially rot prone cactus or succulent that you're growing, you can even up that mineral content to 75% and 25% organic. Or some people use you know, other ingredients like cocoa chips or something entirely different and they don't use any dark organic material whatsoever. So pretty much just have fun with exploring different recipes and trying different things because also we're all in different climates and so certain recipes are gonna work better for people in certain areas. And I'm gonna start with the one I'm most nervous about because it has all these little babies around it. This is an epithelantha. There's different varieties or species of epithelantha. Uh, so this one is the polycephala and I don't want to knock off any of those young babies because I want it to grow all together as a mound. So let's see if we can get this out of the pot without disturbing it too terribly much. Let's see here. So first I do like to try to save the top dressing and I like to reuse that if possible. Oh yeah, that should come out of the pot, not too bad. Okay, I'm gonna kind of dig down into the soil and just grab for those roots and try. Oh yeah, oh see, that came right out. So they must have recently um, repotted this into this pot. But this one is a really neat one, especially as they grow, this will all clump together. They grow in uh, like crevices of rocks and they really blend in beautifully with the rock too. They're very uh, monochromatic. Okay, I'm just looking at the different pot options I have here. Some of the pots I have are too uh, short, like I can't put in that because the roots would already be touching the bottom. So I'm just looking to see what options I have here. Uh, that's always kind of how it goes is I, I have several pot options, but I gotta wait until I like, actually get them unpotted so I can see how, how those roots are actually doing there and how much room they're gonna need. It could actually go in that one. So I'm just gonna cover up those large holes in the bottom with a piece of window screen just to keep my soil from falling through there. I'll just take a handful and Dump that in the bottom, just keep that screen in place. Okay, so I'll just hold my little cactus above the pot there and fill it up. It's really handy when you're working with small plants, small plants in pots to have uh, smaller utensils to work with. So a spoon would work really well. I just have this little tiny scoop and I will just pour my soil in around my plant. So I wanted the soil mix gritty and mineral rich, but also on the finer side because those roots are so tiny. Sometimes if you have uh, your soil too gritty or too open, um, the roots just can't really get around there. You know, they're not able to uh, be in contact with the soil enough to get the moisture they need. So instead of tamping down the soil when you're using a mineral mix like this, like very rich in grit, uh, it's also a better option to just tap the side to allow that soil to settle instead of pressing it down because that could damage roots. So if you notice your cactus is starting to lean to one side as you're tapping, just hold it straight with one finger and give it a tap. So that way the soil can settle around it and it'll still end up straight. For top dressing, I'm going to use turpus. Then I'll just give it a tap and let that top dressing settle. All right, there is our little baby. I absolutely love it. I like this pot too, how it's all like randomly shaped. So there is another little dwarf cactus, our Mammillaria magalanii. And it produces beautiful creamy spines and creamy to pink flowers. They're really, really pretty. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the top dressing in here and let's check out the root system. 
And I've got a pot picked out. I'm hoping it'll fit in this one, but we'll see. Let's see what we got here. This one's got another really tiny root system. Let's see if you'll be able to see it. Pretty tiny, very fine white roots. Let's get a piece of piece of screen down in the bottom of there. Okay, we'll just clean up those edges and add our top dressing. All right, here's the Yavapai top dressing that we just got. I'm just gonna see how this looks. Sometimes I like to play and match the pot or, or contrast with the pot, depending on what kind of look you're going for. But I kind of like how this matches the bisque color of the pot. So overall, this is kind of a monochromatic type of cactus, even with its blooms. Sometimes they can be a little more pink tone, but a lot of times they're more of a creamy nude that match the spines. It is just a beautiful little dwarf cactus, the Mammillaria magalanii. And I had to shift um, some plants around here because I realized it was getting really glary through this window. It gets really bright here. Um, so anyway, if you notice some plants kind of moved around, that's why I'm just kind of working with the light, <laughs> trying to block it um, until I get my blinds replaced up here because those broke a while back. So anyway, we'll, we'll fix that later. Okay, let's pot up this one next. This is a really tiny, adorable dwarf cactus. This is a Turbinocarpus valdezianus and it has beautiful flowers. So this Turbinocarpus valdezianus has really tiny feathers spines. They're radial spines, so they're the spines that don't poke straight out. Those are the central spines. They're the spines that just kind of cover the body and they protect the plant. So I always think of radial spines as protection from the environment and I think of central spines as protection from predators. And I don't know if I mentioned yet, but all the cactus that we're potting up today, all these little dwarf and small slow growing cactus, these are all from Mexico. I'm, I'm very curious to see what the root system is gonna look like on this one. Okay, very small so far. So this is one of the smallest, slowest growing species of Turpinocarpus and of cactus in general. It is a very tiny cactus and it will stay quite small. So let's see, I don't wanna plant this in a pot that's too shallow because these do have the tap root rather than just having fibrous roots. It has the fibrous roots too. Um, and since also since they're especially uh, small and there's not a whole lot there, I wanna keep it in a pot that's fairly small but it also needs to be deep enough to allow for that tap root because that's where they store their moisture um, or a lot of their moisture down there underneath the soil. Okay, let me grab a piece of screen. Uh, we'll just give this pot a try and then I can always uh, check the roots again in the spring and then see if it needs to get up potted into a deeper pot. Just give that a tap and let that soil settle. Okay, we're just adding our top dressing. that up a bit and hopefully it will be happy in here. Our little Turbinocarpus valdezianus uh, is an adorable little cactus. I was thinking of potting up this other Epithelantha micromeris. Um, this one is my larger one and it has fruits right now. So um, those seed pods, I was thinking of leaving it for a little bit longer, but you know what, if it's dry, I'll just go ahead and repot it because I, I do need to get it into a different pot. Um, but let's go ahead and do this next one. This is Mammillaria talalachii, and it's uh, it's not a miniature cactus. It's not a dwarf, but it is a very slow growing species. And the one that I have is super tiny right now. So I figured I'll just go ahead and, uh, I need to get it potted up. So I figured we'll just go ahead and pot it in this video too. So let's go ahead and get that top dressing off and check out the root system on this. Oh, we got a bunch of soil on there. Oh, super tiny roots. Let's get let's get that brush here. Let's use this one. 
I, I like to use these little fan brushes to uh, just dust the spines, especially those radial spines. Sometimes they can catch dust that's, you know, and trap it in with a plant body. Yeah, I think it'll fit in this one. Okay, put that on the bottom and then add a few scoops of soil. Okay, I think that should be deep enough. Okay, for top dressing, I'm gonna use turfus, which is that calcium clay. Okay, there's our Mammillaria telewakii. All done, all potted up. Okay, let's see if we can pot up this Epithelantha too. I'm just gonna check the roots really quick and I'll see if it's uh, able to be potted up right now. Since we're doing this potting up and see if it's able to switch pots right now. So let's see here. That one does not wanna come out, there we go. So at first I was gonna wait to repot this until after I'd harvested the fruit because you have to wait until those are overripe to harvest. So I've just been letting them sit on there. But since the fruit have already formed, I'm just gonna go ahead and pot this up. I think they'll be okay. We'll, we'll leave them on there for now. It's looking pretty good. It's got a really nice root system on it. I'm just trying to figure out which pot we should put this one in. If you haven't seen the Epithelanthus micromeris fruits before, that's what they look like. And you can see the black seeds, actually. If you hold this up to the light, you can see the black seeds right through the skin of the fruit. So the apex is the very top of the cactus. So that's where the new flowers and the fruit is always produced, is at that apex. But they produce gorgeous baby pink flowers. Epithelantha micromeris, those are one of my favorite cacti. They're just absolutely gorgeous. And being that they're a dwarf cactus, they're super easy to care for. You know, they don't take up hardly any space and they get amazing clumps. Like the, the clumps that they form, they're just absolutely gorgeous. And they'll get even whiter spines too. All right, let's see how that is gonna fit in there. Yep, that'll be perfect for the root system. I mean, the plant itself is still really tiny, but the root system will work in this pot. These Epithelantha micromeris, they're originally from Mexico, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. And they are just so neat in their natural habitat because they hide in the crevices of rocks and they really match the rocks so well. They're very hard to see because they're always hiding and they can kind of be like partway like buried almost in the rocks and soil and sand. Get our top dressing on there. Okay, I just realized that I need to make some tags for these guys. So I just have popsicle sticks and I trim those down to whatever size I need. So I just take my shears and I like to snip off the top um, so that way it's not rounded because it looks too much like a popsicle stick in the pots for me. Uh, so I like to snip that off and then I'll just snip that. Oh, you know what? We're gonna make this actually shorter because let's see. Well, that one we'll use for the taller pot. So, and, and then I just write with pencil. Um, so this is gonna be the Epithelantha Micromeris. There we go. Okay, our next one is Turbidoncarpus valdezianus. Okay, so this is Turbidoncarpus valdezianus. We want that to be the front. There we go. Our little baby. All right, I'll get the rest of the tags made and I'll be right back. So now that the cactus are potted up, I just let them sit in dry soil for about one week and then I give them their first drink of water. Okay, now this video is more of a repotting, so it's not as in-depth for the care goes, but I do wanna share some tips for caring for dwarf or miniature cactus. 
Um, so the miniatures are going to be, uh, they're a little more rot prone, especially the ones that have a tap root because they're already holding on to a lot of water. But in general, I mean, you know, these are cactus, so it's kind of the same care as regular cactus go, except you just put a little extra care into these because knowing that they are more rot prone, the reason they're more rot prone is because their root system is so sparse. There's much, um, you know, they don't have big roots. They're very, very little dainty roots. And so they just can't handle a lot of water. They haven't evolved to handle lots of water. So they are from very dry climates. So I'll be watering these along with the rest of my cactus but when I water these I'm just gonna give them a little a little less water so I just will spray until it probably will just you know kind of work its way down the pot I'm not gonna water until the water is like flowing through the bottom of the drainage hole so hopefully that makes sense so I just give them a little less water so you just kind of let the soil you know let the water slowly move through the soil so you don't need to be like gushing water into their pots um, because they, their little tiny root system really can't handle very much but at the same time, you don't want to starve them of water because they, they are still thirsty little plants and they still need to be watered. And you want to water them often enough to keep their root hairs alive, but um, you don't want to water so much that you end up causing root rot and the soil stays too wet. Uh, so I'm going to be watering these about once a week and again, just a lighter hand when I do go to water. Um, but definitely keeping it consistent and not letting them go for long periods without water. All right, I gotta go put these babies outside. I'll let you guys go. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Or if you can't reach me there, you can always reach me on Instagram. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye.